So now I'll do what I said, what I recommended before. First, I will extract my augmented matrix associated with the system. The system here is written specifically written. You see all x1s, one above the other, all x2s, one above the other, all x3s, one above the other, and all x4s, one above the other, to make our first ad identification of the augmented matrix easier. That's the identification of that matrix. Look at this. The first row, 1, 1, 0, because x3 is missing, negative 1, right-hand side, negative 3. Second one, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 1 negative 15 and last one four two two one negative one this is the augmented matrix associated with this system normally I didn't use this I didn't use this kind of notations on my previous example normally when you write this people use the arrow symbol to indicate that we the, we will do some elementary row modification to this system next step I didn't use this arrow before but normally people use this arrow and I will now from now on I will use this arrow now here Here's my clearly identified pivot. Here's my pivot. One. I will use this pivot to eliminate the two and four. The operations for that, I think I put them here somewhere. The operation for to eliminate two is this one. I subtract the double of the first row from the second one, and that will kill two. And to kill four, I subtract, you like the term kill, right? <laughs> I know, it's if I want to get rid of 4 under my 1, I will do what's, what's said here. I'll subtract the 4 of R1 from R3. I'll, because we don't have much time, I'll do it. I'll open it right away. I don't want to take it through it. You can check this arithmetic later. That's what it will be if I do these operations. It's a very easy system. In fact, now I can easily identify the pivot in the second row. Here it is. And now I can use this pivot to eliminate the element underneath it. Underneath this, that's the element negative two. And the operation for that, the the operation which is required for that is this operation. We have to add the double of the second row to the third row. Again, I will I will I'm not going to take you through the arithmetic. I'm not going to take you through the arithmetic. It's, it's here. The result of that arithmetic, and this is the matrix in the row echelon form, right? Because here's my pivots. One pivot. That's the other pivot. And that's the third pivot. So if you use the terminology, in this matrix, in this augmented matrix, which had five columns altogether, only three columns are the leading columns. Even not every column on the left-hand side ended up leading column. This one is not a leading column because it doesn't have any pivot in it. Now, now we can bring the system back in, right? Now I can put the variables x1. I can put the variable x1 next to this column, next to the coefficients in this column. Variable x2 here, variable x3 here, and the unknown x4 here. Now when we have my system in row echelon form like this, we can now go back to the conventional look of this system of linear equations so we can take my variables back here they are and we can now build this system which corresponds to this uh, I did this here I think I even opened it last time so if I do that that's the equation which corresponds to the first row x1 x2 x3 is missing negative x4 right hand side is free uh, equation which corresponds to the second second line uh, the one which I showed you last time was this one x2 was for this coefficient, x1 is gone. Uh, negative 1, which sits next to the x3, that's the one which I replaced with lambda. Let me just put it back to x3 for the time being, like it, like it should be. Uh, I also, you see, if you see, well, you see, I also took this coefficient, this particular one, uh, this unknown, sorry, this particular unknown to the right-hand side, rather than keeping it on the left-hand side. And then x4, it's here. It's for 1. Negative 9, it's the right-hand side, that's the negative 9. Now, the last line, it's a very simple equation like this. 7x4 equals negative 7. All of, the other, all of the other unknowns here, gone. Now, the reason I put it this way, the reason I put my system this way, the reason I put my x3, somehow distinguished variable, which is gone on the, on the 
to the right hand side. The reason for that is that this variable, it corresponds to the column, which is not the leading one. If you remember, the leading column is the one which carries a pivot in it. So the first column is a leading one, second one is a leading one, third one is not a leading column, and the last one is leading again. So all the, the principle which I was following, which I was following here is that all of the variables which are the leading variables, I kept them on the left hand side. All of the variables which are non leading ones, they went to the right hand side. Okay. The reason for that is that the reason for that is this. This remaining bit, this one, look, it's perfect triangular shape. This remaining bit, bit is a perfect triangular shape. For such a triangular shape, we know we can always back substitute. We can always find all of the unknowns which are sitting in this triangular shape, no matter what happens on the right hand side. So this suggests to us that actually I can choose, I can choose for x3 whatever I want, whatever I want. I can choose x3 any value, like 1, 2, 0, complex number i, for instance. If I do that, right hand side will become a numeric part, completely numeric part, and then the left hand side can be easily back substituted into the values for x4, x2, and x1. So what I'm saying is this, for every choice of x3, in fact, I can always back substitute, because it's a perfect triangular shape. For every choice of x3, I can always back substitute, and that will be a solution. So in fact, we have many solutions for this system, and they are all depend on my cho choice of x3. That's why actually, in, in, like a, in a streamlined version of this solution, when we get used to this uh, row echelon method of solving of system li of linear equations, these variables, which correspond to the non-leading non -leading columns, they normally they renamed with some other letters, T, S, lambda, or mu, because they become sort of a parameter, which controls what kind of solution you come up with. For every different value of this parameter, you come up with a different solution. So if I solve it, if I now back substitute it, this one I'll back substitute. So let me go back to lambda notation. So if I continue this a little bit longer, so it's negative 9 plus lambda, it becomes. So that's why we just rename this x3 with the, with the special letter lambda. Let's just try to back substitute now. So we now do back substitution for the remaining unknowns. I think I have it somewhere. I have it here. If I back substitute, look at this, what will be. What it will be, I'll, I'll, I'll go from the bottom because this is with... When we, back back, when we back substitute, we of course start with the easiest equation at the bottom, and it's here. x4 immediately ends up with negative 1. x3, we just put it like this because we just rename x3 into lambda. Now for the x2, it would be a proper solution now. If I just take this x4 value, we know it's negative 1 on this side. It will be just negative 8. So for the x2, you have this. And for x1, let's just, have, let's just see what happens for x1. Negative, well, first I just solve for it. So I just take all of the other variables in this equation on the other side. Now I substitute what I have for them. For x4, I have negative 1. So together with this, well, actually I did all of the arithmetic already. We can double check everything. So negative 3 here. Uh, 1, negative 1, and x4 makes it negative 4. And negative x2, which carries negative 8, so it will be plus 8, it makes it 4. Everybody agrees with this arithmetic? Perfect, and lambda stays here because it was negative, it was plus lambda with negative next to x2, it makes negative lambda. This is the solution to your system in the parametric form. For every choice of lambda, no matter what I choose for that lambda, I will end up with a quadruple of numbers which will make this system correct numerical identities. So you have many equations, and not only you now can say you have many equations, you gave sort of a complete description of this whole set of solutions via this parameter lambda. In fact, in fact, if I just, if I convert this description, let me ask you this. Uh, well, I have very little hope yeah, I'll find an answer right now because we discussed this already, I know, I, but let me just ask, let me ask you this. When you look at this, when you look at these four identities which are given in terms of parameter lambda, do you have like any association in your head when you look at this? Does, does anything, yes please. Yes, that's the way we describe lines in R4, right? If I convert, if I now extract this, if I just convert this to the way we normally look at lines, it, it will be like this, look at this. If I call this x1, x2, x3, x4 quadruple as a vector form, x vector, 
that's the quadruple. This will be equal, look at this, what, what, what it will be equal to. This vector plus lambda times this vector. Let's just see how this how these vectors come up. Neg four is this four. This negative eight is this free coefficient. There's no free coefficient in the x free expression, that's why it's zero in here. And negative one, that's that's the one. And now all the all of the coefficients which have lambda next to it, in x two in x one it's negative one, that's why we got negative one here. In x two we have one, here we go. In x in x three we get another one, and no lambda present in x four, that's why we had zero here. Thank you very much. I'm surprised somebody realized it's it's a one by now. I mean you will when the test comes, you everybody will realize it's a one, but the test hasn't come yet. So, in fact, you see what happens. The solution to this system is, in fact, geometrically, it is a line. And we, that, that, that's the way how we just saw that. So, remember, you, the, the general algorithm, how you solve a system of linear equations, when you use the Gaussian elimination method, you extract the augmented matrix, you take the augmented matrix to the row echelon form, then you identify leading columns and non-leading columns, you take the variable corresponding to the non-leading columns on the right-hand side, that will be your parameters. And then you back substitute for the rest of the variables, for the leading variables. And you can present the solution in vector form, like this. That's, that's all there is to this method. 